The T-Rex is often made fun of due to its tiny arms, despite the fact that some scientists believe these puny arms could curl 400 pounds. But despite this raw strength, the arms were not only short, but possessed a limited range of movement also, only capable of swinging across at an angle of about 45 degrees. If we take a look at the Jurassic Park movies, we can see the evolution of the arms and the spacing between them. The question that's often asked is, if a T-Rex fell, how did he get up, given its tiny arms and low center of gravity? Keep watching the video to find out. Paleontologist Gregory M. Erickson of Florida State University provides the following explanation of how a five-ton teeter-totter gets up. Scientific inquiry has focused on the utility of the diminutive arms of Tyrannosaurus for nearly a century. Several theories regarding the arms' role in raising these animals from the ground have long been kicked around. American paleontologist Henry Fairfield Osborne, the first one to describe the T-Rex, initially expressed doubts that the relatively small humerus, or upper arm bone, associated with this enormous animal really belonged to it. Once convinced, however, he forwarded the first theory in 1906 of their utility in grasping organs for copulation. Okay. In 1970, British paleontologist Barney Newman posited that the arms actually served as braces to prevent the front of the body from skidding forward as the animal rose from a prone position using its hind limbs. During such activity, the forelimbs would have been extended in an action reminiscent of a push-up. Other competing theories contend that the arms are vestigial, degenerate organs that have lost much use, or that they functioned as meat hooks while the creature's teeth were employed. Are any of these theories correct? We may never know the answer. Nevertheless, the recent finding of the first specimens of complete T-Rex forelimbs in northern Montana has opened the door to biomechanical analyses and osteopathic observations from which new insights into the physical capacities of these structures have emerged. With this new data, the arm functionality of the T-Rex is being restudied. It's now clear that the T-Rex's hands could not reach its mouth. The elbow could not be extended much beyond a 90 degree angle. The arms were very strong, perhaps capable of curling nearly 400 pounds as mentioned earlier but possessed a very limited range of motion, both side to side and up and down. The wrists were considerably weaker and do not seem suited for sporting large mechanical loads. Like those of Albertus or Cousins, the small T-Rex arms were often broken during life. This fact suggests that they were poorly suited for whatever the dinosaur was trying to use them for, and more importantly, that these animals could go without using their arms for up to one month. Collectively, these findings seem to fly in the face of just one of the aforementioned theories, Newman's push-up theory. If this is the case, then how did the T-Rex get up? Gregory reckons we should look towards birds, or better still, avian dinosaurs, for the answer. As animals such as the ostrich can stand up without the aid of arms, it's simply a matter of getting one's limbs below the center of gravity before extending them. There are no studies suggesting tyrannosaurs couldn't do this. Furthermore, tyrannosaurs would have had the additional aid of their tails. From skeletal evidence and albertosaur trackways in which the tails did not drag, it's clear tyrannosaur tails acted as counterbalances of 10,000 pounds walking teeter-totters. The tail would have helped to keep the center of balance back on the body as the hind limbs were moved into a position underneath. Clearly, Tyrannosaurs got up at least once during their lifespan, at birth, and there's no reason to believe that they couldn't throughout life. So what do you think? How do you think the T-Rex got up? Like the animation? Like an ostrich? Did he roll on his side? I don't know. I'd love to hear your theories, so drop a comment below. And if you haven't already done it, hit the bell icon because YouTube Despite people being subscribed to you, YouTube thinks it's fun to not show any of your subscribers new releases. I mean, I've been VK. Catch you later.